Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Los Angeles. Today we're going to take one final look at a completely rebuilt Pacific Electric Railway, including those lines in the Inland Empire that were lost to us in the era of freeway construction. Now, um, as uh, those of you who subscribe to the channel know, um, we have been looking at the uh, possibility of rebuilding the entire Pacific Electric Railway, or at least uh, as much of it as could feasibly be rebuilt based on what actually survives. And this, after um, collecting a whole lot of feedback from a whole lot of people, um, including my wonderful patrons on Patreon and uh, people over in the Facebook group, uh, fans of Los Angeles Metro Rail, um, this this is pretty close to what I think uh, should ultimately be on the ballot in 2020. And now what we're going to do today is the same thing we did in the last two episodes. Um, this one's not going to be quite as long as uh, the last few episodes because um, we actually we covered a good deal of these lines in the previous video. So I'm only going to be talking about the specific changes that I've made to the lines we've already talked about in the other videos. Um, and uh, to start with that, we'll just uh, do what I like to usually do for, for these and just kind of step back to where we are right now. I've been thinking about the El Monte extension of the Gold Line and this, um, the more southernmost um, extension of the Gold Line, um, the east side extension that is, this part is going to become uh, the blue line in the coming years. And uh, once the regional connector is completed, but this this part right here, so um, up to El Monte is funded already. So what I was thinking was I, I was trying to figure out like what Metro was going for with this line, because ending it just in El Monte didn't really make a lot of sense to me, and it, it didn't make much sense to other people either. Because I mean, um, El Monte is a happening little town, but there's plenty of other stuff going on over here. So what I think we do is what we we should do is uh, actually connect the um, El Monte extension of the Gold Line to the existing Union Pacific Railroad tracks here and then just build new light rail tracks alongside the old historic Union Pacific route. And as you can see on our historic uh, Pacific Electric map, this uh, used to be the uh, Los Angeles, San Pedro, and Salt Lake Railroad, which um, was, I believe, owned by uh, the guy who founded Clark County, if I'm not mistaken, out in Las Vegas. Um, I don't remember his first name, but Clark, of course. Um, and then that ran right adjacent to the uh, the Southern Pacific Line, which um, for our intents and purpose, purposes we can kind of think of as a Pacific Electric Line because uh, it pretty much was the Pacific Electric for most of its history. Um, so we're going to revive both of these two uh, former uh, passenger rail lines as, as metro rail lines. This will be um, the extension of the El Monte um, the South El Monte uh, leg of the Gold Line, which is already funded to South El Monte, at least as far as I believe here. Um, yeah, so it just get, uh, that's just going to go straight down the Pomona Freeway, uh, and then it's going to end somewhere around here near either Santa Anita Ave or Pack Avenue. That's what's funded already. So I just have it continuing down the 60 and then just joining the existing Union Pacific Railroad right of way here. Now, um, also for the Inland Empire, um, other things we looked at uh, were, and um, I talked about with a lot of people, were um, the Ontario Airport and the old uh, Rancho Cucamonga bike path. It, it does appear that it would be politically feasible to bring this back as Metro Rail, but I say we don't stop there. Uh, we don't just start uh, with the Inland Empire um, rail trail, which actually does have enough room on it for both um, a rail trail and uh, Metro Rail. So. Nobody um, who can currently enjoy riding their bike around the Inland Empire um, will not be able to do so um, once all this money gets invested in the rail system. And um, so um, this, I have kind of these two lines playing with each other here. Like, um, you see this little thing, it kind of looks like a flag coming up. Now, that is... Um, another thing that I kind of uh, changed my mind about. So this is something we talked about in the previous videos, was the old Newport line. Yeah. So this would be um, up until Balboa here, that would be uh, the old um, Pacific Electric Newport line. In, in, a, in the part one or two, um, I think part one, I talked about um, Seal Beach and how the right-of-way has changed, needs to change in Seal Beach. Now, um, if we just take a look at Seal Beach real quick. You'll see that the original right-of-way here, on, uh, I originally actually didn't 
think that we should extend it past Steel Beach because um, there's been so much development on the right of way on the right of way here. But after thinking about it extensively, um, it occurred to me that. Uh, South Orange County does not have the transportation that it needs, and local politicians in Southern Orange County, like Laguna Beach, uh, Laguna Nigel, uh, Dana Point, Capistrano Beach, this whole area, Aliso Viejo, all this area, um, I've been hearing people from this area complaining about, about the lack of transit, um, with the exception of Metrolink, of course. But even Metrolink is sorely in need of improvement. In addition to actually funding um, the electrification and improvement of all of the existing Metrolink trains, um, I thought I ultimately decided that it would make sense to not only rebuild the old uh, Newport line, but uh, instead of using the old right of way of the Newport line has been obliterated pretty much. Uh, it's not. It's either well, it still exists on as parking lots and a few stretches like you'll see here, but a good deal of it has been obliterated. So what we do is we just have a train running straight down the median of Pacific Coast Highway, um, just like right down the middle. Uh, two tracks. There's plenty of room right in the middle of PCH. We just have it go straight all the way down the Pacific Coast Highway. That way we don't have to tussle with the California Co California Coastal Commission, um, who are um, very protective of our wonderful coastline whenever anything new is being built but if it's a modification to an existing road like it would be uh, with PCH I say that's good I say we do that instead so we don't have to wrestle with the Coastal Commission as much and uh, furthermore um, I think instead of terminating in Balboa like uh, the old Newport line run by Henry Huntington did I think we keep going because the only real reason that uh, it actually ended in Newport uh, back back when the Newport line the Pacific Electric line still existed that is this line right here, and um, that ended in Balboa. But the only reason for that was that was kind of where civilization ended when Henry Huntington built this system in the early 1900s. Uh, there wasn't really anything down here. There was no PCH yet. Uh, Laguna Beach was relatively undeveloped still. And um, so essentially uh, what we do is um, we just we extend it all the way down to the Metrolink train in uh, San Clemente. And then we have a, a PCH metro rail line, and then you have it connect with uh, all these new OCTA streetcar lines. So Orange County is actually studying a number of routes for either bus rapid transit or streetcar. Of course, my preference is streetcar. Um, this is funded under construction uh, soon, if not already. I believe it's under construction already. This is Harbor. This is like pretty much Orange. Or no, this is this is Harbor. This is Orange County's main street right here. This is Bristol. And uh, that would, uh, Orange County Transit Authority is studying a line to UC Irvine. So um, these OCTA streetcar lines would pretty much serve the north-south transit corridors for Orange County. And we would, uh, with this measure, we would essentially just give Orange County a, whatever amount of money it would, they would need to actually build this stuff. And that would just be written into the ordinance in addition to the um, money that would be uh, already being appropriated to Metro. So now a few other uh, changes I made. Uh, before we look at the Inland Empire, um, I altered the this Cherry Avenue line to, because um, it occurred to me that the, the entrance of Long Beach Airport is on is actually on um, uh, this side of, of Long Beach Airport and uh, also Long Beach City College and the Lakewood, uh, there's a big mall right here. So we reroute this this way and then that way it can join with this Catella Tustin line which I have decided we should, uh, the original Pacific Electric route actually went straight through Disneyland, exactly where Disneyland is now, um, which uh, as we've uh, we talked about in an earlier video, what, which was right here. But um, the right of way um, is intact again, starting here. So I figure we just extend this uh, Catella Beach Cities line straight down to Tustin as Metro Rail, because that just makes the most sense because it's an east-west corridor. And, um, Finally, all right, so now we're gonna, um, I'm gonna repopulate the map so we can look at the Inland Empire. So uh, most of the other stuff we've already talked about. A few things, a few other changes that I do wanna mention real quick is, uh, so you know, I'll show the, the Marina Del Rey line is actually still, this could be revived. So um, a lot of people, um, you've probably seen the old railroad tracks in Marina Del Rey. And in Marina Del Rey, um, this was the old Englewood Marina Del Rey line. And this line, they, they tried pretty well to obliterate it when they constructed the 405 freeway here. Um, this was this line that originally ran 
from what will be a station on the Crenshaw LAX line, the Inglewood Crenshaw LAX station. It ran from here, and then this is where the four. This is kind of where the uh, where the 405 is now, and the Marina Expressway. But it it, it, it followed the 405, then turned onto West or uh, um, Jefferson, and then onto a private right of way to Marina Del Rey. And there's actually still tracks in place um, for the grade crossing in Marina Del Rey, and I'll show you exactly where that is. So. The old Inglewood line, um, I've decided that this should be a part of the uh, UC Riverside line. Instead of instead of channeling everything to LAX, um, it would make more sense for this line to kind of branch off the historic Pacific Electric route, which is intact enough to be rebuilt. Um, as you can see here, uh, there's this like kind of dead land right next to the 405 here. You may have noticed before um, by La Tierra, and that's the old Pacific Electric route. Uh, see all these cars? Um, right by this uh, apartment complex right here. The, um, the Right behind that, this is the old Pacific Electric route, right where you see my mouse going right now. So you can see that is attacked. It has not been built on. So we just continue this line from UC Riverside down the old Whittier line and then to Inglewood, down, down Firestone to Inglewood. To, um, and we just... Uh, follow the pretty much exactly except for um, the part in Playa, Del, Playa Vista here has been um, this part's been obliterated I think it might have curved kind of a little bit more through here like this but we just have it go straight down the middle of Sentinella and then to Jefferson and that's this is where the old right-of-way resumes where it has no longer been obliterated and it just uh, you can still see the uh, the buttresses in the in the river here you can still see them and uh, this is, uh, you just uh, follow this old Pacific Electric right of way past the Marina Expressway, and then here's that old grade crossing you've probably seen before on Lincoln Boulevard. So um, we would pretty much be, we would bringing, be bringing that line back to life by mashing it together with a bunch of other former Pacific Electric lines, and we would ultimately end up with something that I, I would like to look like this. Um, it's running from Marina Del Rey all the way to UC Riverside. All right, now, um, of course, we've got our West Santa Ana branch. We've got our blue line. We've talked about that already. We've got our... Um, so I thought I, uh, another addition I made was a Long Beach to Santa Monica line. And um, that um, makes a lot of sense because... Um, I, I think I, maybe I talked about this in the previous video, but um, I, I changed it since then. Uh, pretty much you have it run along the existing expo tracks just to my neighborhood right here where it would resume the historic right away of the Pacific Electric. And then um, what it would do is it would follow the, uh, this line to San Clemente up until the old Pacific Electric turnoff here in uh, Belmont, near Belmont Shore. And uh, pretty much that would be similar to the thing in Redondo Beach where there's an existing park that's been constructed. It's a popular local par park on the original right of way. But despite there having been a park put on top of it, um, that park can just be moved. Parks can be moved because a park is just a nice field with some um, you know, playground equipment and stuff. So what we do is we take back the Pacific Electric right of way here, um, have it just uh, curve around this, the, the school over here, and um, just uh, run on Livingston Drive. And then what we do is we just shift. Uh, this is only going to have to take maybe a very limited amount of space from the part Livingston Drive Park. So what we do is we we're gonna have to tear down the Wells Fargo building right here to take back the right of way. But I say that's worth doing because that's the only building that would have to be um, torn down uh, for this to happen. And then we just turn this old parking lot into an extension of Livingston Drive Park to make up for the acreage that would be cut off for the return of rail just on the edge of the park here. So we actually expand Livingston Drive Park, but we change the shape of it a little bit, and we take back some of the parking spaces because there will now be rail access. And then uh, you, that gives you something that looks like this. So you have this Long Beach to Santa Monica. It kind of does this lap around the downtown Long Beach um, existing blue line thing. It just heads straight down Ocean. Previously, I'd, I'd said that I'd like Broadway better, but just because of the grade conflicts on Broadway, I think maybe uh, after thinking about that for a while, I might have been wrong. And I think maybe uh, running it just straight down Ocean Boulevard up like that would be ideal. And then, um, of course, we've got Western Pride, Del Rey. We've got that orange line. We've got that San Pedro line we talked about. We've got the La Cunada line we talked about. We've got that Disney LAX line. So the Disney LAX line, I don't think I did much to change. Um, I just, oh yeah, yeah, no. Um, so I did change it a little bit. So um, the Disney LAX line, I think, should 
continue to um, uh, Anaheim um, high speed rail station like I like I had before. But after that, I think because high speed rail is actually going to end in Anaheim, and I don't think it actually should be ending in Anaheim. I think high speed rail should end in Santa Ana because um, that way it would connect to the Inland Empire Orange County Metrolink line and. Um, more transfers just means it's more of a pain for people to take the train, and it just means that um, fewer people will will do so. So what I say is we just um, force uh, the metro rail tracks down this existing corridor, and uh, I don't know how exactly we we do that, but I'd say it would be worth the money. Um, either we could construct an elevated structure or we just cram it right next to the existing railroad tracks, just so we could have that connectivity to the Santa Ana depot. Um, that would be running parallel to the existing Metrolink service, but the benefit of this would be um, Metrorail is more affordable than Metrolink, and it runs more frequently. So it actually benefits Metrolink. So uh, one thing you'll see a lot of um, on this map is that um, you'll see a lot of um, lines that are kind of really, especially in the Inland Empire, um, that are a lot closer to um, the Metrolink lines than we're, we're used to. And uh, there, there was some resistance from the San Bernardino line constituency are the uh, people on Metrolink who uh, work on the San Bernardino line originally just to, the idea of the the gold slash blue line coming out all this way because they uh, they're like well that's going to take riders from us and the answer to that question is actually well yes p at, at first because but that's because Metrolink is more expensive than Metro that's not because um that's not that's not going to hurt rail in general that's not going to be bad for rail passengers that just means that the balance is going to shift more in favor of metro initially until metrolink lowers their fares because metrolink has to lower their fares eventually it's it's like twelve dollars or twenty dollars to take metrolink it's it's zoned fares it sucks um, the app is nice. It's, it, they, they have made some improvements, but I think they still need to be working towards an integrated fare system. So I, I ultimately see Metro and Metrolink as just one system, um, long, very long term. Um, in the immediate future, it'll just be like electrified Metrolink and electric Metro Rail. And then we'll also have um, in San Bernardino County out here, just uh, moving on, uh, just so I, I don't take up all of your day again here. Um, there's going to be this new, um, so I'm going to show a few more things on the map real quick. So um, this is the old, uh, this is the old San, Ber uh, the old route through San Bernardino, and uh, these are old. Uh, San that's a, this is the Redlands Aero service um, that's going to being developed by San Bernardino County right now, and um, I just uh, say why not fund an extension of that to Yasipa? Uh, am I saying that right? And then uh, just rebuild this old Santa Fe loop. Are these two old Santa Fe loops right here, and then this one that was a ball that was mm, kind of demolished for this freeway here, but there's actually a median in the freeway, and there's still some old right of way that can be used out there. I'll show you that real quick. Yeah, so um, here we are right now. That's the existing Metrolink terminus. This will be the Redlands Rail extension here, and uh, but but that used to go up here and loop around to Highland. So we just rebuild the Highland loop, and then let's let's just have that uh, circle around to San Bernardino International Airport, because I know that San Bernardino County wants to be connected to their airport. They want that. They want that connection. It's important. And I say we give it to them. We fund it because they're going to be voting on this too. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah. So we just and we just have another loop on this freeway here, but we have it kind of veer off of the freeway. Um, Right, right near where the old rail line here is, and then we're gonna have to buy a few houses here. But I say that, you know, people did not. I did not. I, I expected there to be more resistance to my suggestion that we use eminent domain in a few cases, um, namely in East Long Beach and uh, Torrance, to reclaim uh, small portions of the original Pacific Electric right of way that were actually destroyed or uh, just uh, at least um, obstructed to build housing on. And uh, the response I got was like. No, you definitely do that. Like people were actually enthusiastic about it, which kind of surprised me, um, just because uh, the history of eminent domain is complicated, and uh, eminent do domain is also what was used to destroy these neighborhoods that the freeways now go through. And um, so eminent domain is not by any means always a good thing, even though I'm very, very confident that in this case it would be entirely a good thing, except for the specific people who would have to move um, because their houses were being bought by the, the county and uh, turn, turned into back into rail lines. But um, yeah, so people seem pretty cool with using eminent domain, and that, that's going to save us 
literally millions, possibly billions of dollars. Because if we had to build entirely new rights of way, um, not only would that probably require more eminent domain, because there's so much development has happened since the Pacific Electric was originally uh, surveyed by uh, Henry Huntington and company, that um, I really, um, yeah, it, just, it would it would be so much more expensive to to build an equivalent system than to just rebuild the system we already had with the surveying work that's already been done. So I'm just going to show the rest of these lines here, so we um, so I don't again take all your day. But um, yeah, so anyways, the South Coast Air Quality Management District. Um, does include uh, it actually goes all the way down to Temecula and they're going to be voting on this too so we're going to extend we're going to rebuild this old train that used to go to Temecula the right of way exists to Lake Alzenor and it will have to be almost entirely rebuilt south of there but they're paying for this too I say it's not fair that they don't get any rail service if we're asking them to raise their taxes and help us pay for all this of course we'll have a this will also pay for an uh, a new state-funded Amtrak service similar to the uh, San Joaquin's or the uh, Pacific Surfliner to the um, India and Palm Springs long term I'd like to see this go all the way to Mexico but we'll talk about that in the in future videos now um, to get down to down and dirty for the Inland Empire here um, just uh, these specific lines need to come back because um, while most of these lines were originally laid out to actually enrich Henry Huntington and his real estate buddies, um, a lot of things have actually been built on the old right of ways since then that are very important institutions. So, like by bringing back this line, instead of uh, if we had if, if this line, um, for example, that I have decided should be revived up to Arrowhead Hot Springs. Um, originally, this was just a tourist att attraction, and it would, it, the train would take you up to Arrowhead Hot Springs. I don't actually know much about that specific history, but um, it would uh, head up this existing street here and um, take you to housing that was probably being developed to enrich Henry Huntington up here. But now, today, modern times, that area is now San Bernardino State University, which is an extremely important institution, just like all of our universities. And that just happens to have been built, um, let me get oriented here, exactly where this um, uh, this old uh, Pacific Electric line used to terminate. So uh, where the Pacific Electric used to turn uh, out to Arrowhead Hot Springs out here, I'm not sure exactly which route it took, to the east, but to the west, um, North Park Boulevard can just be used, and it can just be uh, continued to San Bernardino, or, um, excuse me, that's uh, California State University, San Bernardino. We've got a lot of universities, so forgive me for mixing them up. Um, and, um, yeah, so let's see what else, just to get through this here. Um, this is the last video like this I'm going to do before we start talking about these lines one by one. All right, so we also fund the Metrolink extension to Hemet and San, San Jacinto. Um, and then, of course, so um, we've rebuilt this line up to Rialto. These neighborhoods grew up around the old Pacific Electric. That's um, that's old, old right-of-way. And then we have the... This is the green line. The green line, I, I spoke to somebody, um, or actually a number of people have been talking about the green line, how it can best be improved. And this is what I've ultimately settled on, is that we have the green line run all the way to um, Riverside, up to San Bernardino, to um, California State University, San Bernardino here. Um, and uh, that will provide connectivity to high-speed rail. And this is something uh, people brought up on YouTube and on Facebook, that the connectivity to the new high-speed rail station in Norwalk, Santa Fe Springs is going to be super important. So. We gotta fund that. That's that's great. But we, what we actually do is we're gonna um, can we should combine the Green Line with the Lincoln Boulevard bus rapid transit light rail thing they're doing. So that's gonna be but B, uh, BRT for this corridor is funded already, but light rail is I think it's funded, but not for like 40 years. So we could accelerate that and just have one continuous rail line. And um, well, ideally, these would all be rail lines. That's that's what I'm envisioning. Um, but yeah, so we bring back the Pacific Electric uh, lines through Riverside, and some people might say, hey, so why um, wouldn't this be redundant? There's already Metrolink service in this area. Um, why would you have two trains running right next to each other? And the answer is that Metrolink is not the same as what the Pacific Electric was. They provided a different kind of service. And as you can see, even back then, um, when the old the metro the existing Metrolink line is the Santa is what was then the Santa Fe, and that was then an uh, intercity railroad because it was mainly a freight railroad. But um, the Pacific Electric had these had, had these local stops, and what people would do 
is they would they would take the regional train to the closest Pacific Electric station, you probably Corona or something, and then they would just um, take the um, slower uh, local stopping car here um, to their to, to their final destination, and that that still works. That's still a feasible way to do transportation in our region, and we've got to bring it back because traffic is a crisis. It's not getting any better. And so essentially, this will actually make Metrolink ridership better. More people will ride Met Metro Metrolink because these lines will act as feeders to Metrolink. A feeder is essentially just a rail line that is uh, that um, funnels passengers onto a larger rail. Uh, finally, uh, one last thing. Uh, I think I covered everything except for this, um, this new Hawthorne line. So you can see, um, paralleling the Crenshaw LAX line up here, um, I have this this Bria LAX line I just wanted to show you real quick before we go. And that's just gonna follow the old Los Angeles Electric Railway route straight down Hawthorne Boulevard um, and into um, this this old route that was, I think the, the Hawthorne Boulevard continues all the way to the Civic Center in Palos Verdes here. And um, this was actually surveyed as a Pacific Electric route, even though I'm not sure that it ever actually was one but it was surveyed as one so we know that the grade is not too uh uh and by surveyed i mean the engine this road was originally built with the idea that there would be rail on it i don't actually know specifically if hawthorne boulevard um this far south actually ever did have rail i think it did but i know that this road was um i know for a fact that it was surveyed um so as the, so as to have a grade that uh, uh, uh an electric interurban rail car could um travel on that's why it's curvy like this instead of being a steeper road um and that so that yeah just um finish the what henry huntington started trying to get a train out to palos verdes here but then uh, just have that go straight up the old um los angeles electric railway route down hawthorne boulevard which um that does not have to be grade separated hawthorne boulevard is way too wide um it could be grade separated i would i would go with elevated um if we did grade separated um but uh yeah and then that will just um I just envisioned that as uh, connecting to La Bria because the Crenshaw LAX line, um, that's going to take this, I, I'm very confident it's going to take this more more um, circuitous route uh, through that because there's 9 million additional annual riders that would be served by this route instead of one of the more direct ones. But I think we should also have a direct, a more direct route. So I thought La Bria and then just parallel the existing Crenshaw LAX stuff that's going to be built already. And then just have that terminate in Palos Verdes down there. And I, I, I don't think I missed anything. I'm sure I'll, I'll be informed in the comments if I did miss anything else. Um, but, um, oh yeah, yeah, one, one last thing was um, the Seal Beach line, or the, what was the Seal Beach line, is now the uh, line that will go all the way to San Clemente Pier. That will uh, follow the old Southern Pacific route into here, which we can think of as Pacific Electric, and then just um, into Chino. And this this is an old Pacific route up Pacific Electric route up here. Um, that was, I believe, yeah, it's this specific one. Uh, and instead of going left to an old housing development um, that, like 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 we've discussed, um, a lot of these lines were built to sell housing mostly. So instead of going left to the old housing development, we go right because there's this big shopping center. Oh yeah, so yeah, so this is, this. see this wide street? These streets are almost always, you can always, almost always bet that these were Pacific Electric red lines. So we just rebuild the line up the street and uh, through Upland and then just have it circle around the, the 210 freeway up here and uh, just have it circle around this this sprawl right here, this shopping sprawl. We gotta lasso that sprawl, because uh, big shopping centers like this, like they're all missed opportunities. Look at all that parking. That that could be housing. That could be so many great things that it's not. So what we do is we lasso that. We we uh we we get a lasso and we lasso that sprawl. We build a train around it. And that's how you lasso sprawl, and you end up with this thing right here. And that's that connects. And that that turns into walkable housing and uh, a nice a nice community instead of just endless surface lots. And you rebuild this Pacific Electric route down here, and bada bing. I think I covered everything. Um, yeah, we got the Tustin routes, we got the OCTA streetcar, we got San Clemente. Also, we extend the purple line out to Pacific Palisades instead of doing it down Wilshire just because it's so close to this. Um, Pacific Palisades is uh, one of LA's little centers, and that's very important too. Oh yeah, I also extended the red line all the way down to um, the San Pedro downtown. We rebuilt the old San Pedro Depot. We also have our silver line um, following the original Pacific Electric route out there. Um, and 
uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of personally getting bored of doing videos where I just talk about maps. I'm gonna get back to doing uh, scripted videos. Um, so I just wanted to get part three out and just kind of um, uh, um, let you guys know about the the specific changes I've made. Um, before I move on to doing videos about these lines one by one, and of course, um, taking on the Beverly Hills Unified School District, which we recently filed yet another frivolous lawsuit. So uh, against the uh, Purple Line subway extension. Um, so I'm gonna have to do a video on that, take them on, and let people know what's up with that. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to that now. But I hope you enjoyed this look um, through my my thought process in terms of exactly. Um, which lines of the Pacific Electric could feasibly be rebuilt and how exactly we could do that. Um, and of course, there's this is such an enormous complex system. Of course, I've left so much stuff out. That's why I'm going to be doing videos on each of these lines one by one if I can actually get them onto the ballot. So um, that's going to be part of um, the leverage that I use uh, to get this stuff on the ballot is that I will essentially make commercials or like mini documentaries about each one of these lines and then tie those lines to the fact that they would be funded and rebuilt with this ballot measure, which um, social media is hugely important in local politics in, in 2018 and in the, in the modern age, if you will. Uh, so um, I think that that would be a, a big advantage um, for for the measure, just to have somebody like me um, willing to commit themselves full time to um, advocating for the specific lines and the specific routings that would be the most cost effective, because we could actually fix traffic in our lifetime in Los Angeles, and I'm not that's not hyperbole, or at least at least at least for I'm 25, so my lifetime. I, I don't know I don't know how old my demographic is, but um, this I think we this this could get built in under. 40 years if we put the money into it, I would say, because this is, um, these are existing right of ways. Um, we could do this in less than, I mean, China built an entire, an enti China, all of China became linked with high speed rail since like 2008. So if people are going to tell me that we can't rebuild something that we were able to build in 1900, um, in 2018 with the resources that the modern Los Angeles has and the expertise and the people, the brilliant people we have working here, I I laugh at that. I, I think that's just ridiculous because of course we can do this. Um, there's absolutely no technical reason that we could not do this. The only thing that would stop this from actually getting rebuilt would be our own cynicism and self-doubt. And I say we reject cynicism, we reject self-doubt, and we remind ourselves that we can do this. We can rebuild the entire Pacific Electric in 2020, and we will do this. Um, thanks again to my wonderful patrons on Patreon for making this channel possible. And please do like and subscribe. I will be back with um, better produced videos than this one, where I um, am going to be doing um, flyovers similar to the Vermont Avenue subway video or the uh, West Santa Ana branch video I've already done, um, but for all of these lines, all of them. So please do stay tuned. Please do um, support me on Patreon if you can afford a few bucks a month and you, you want the trains in LA to come back. Um, they It's not just you. These were the good old days. It, I tell this to people all the time. I remember when I was a kid, one last thing before I go is um, what really got me thinking about this was when I was when I was a kid, my grandmother would always tell me about um, the 20th Century Limited, this wonderful train that would travel from New York to Chicago in 16 hours. I was like, you can't take a train to New York from New York to Chicago now that takes only 16 hours. And this was when I was like eight. And my grandmother was like, yeah, it's too bad. Everything changed with cars. And I was like, well, why? Why did it change? And the more I learned, the more I realized there is no good reason for the way things are set up today. There is no reason that we don't have an awesome high-speed train from a luxurious high-speed train from LA to New York. The only reason is we haven't made it a priority. But we actually are the people who make who make the decision as to whether or not something is a priority. And I say in 2020, we make the decision that efficient, comfortable, safe passenger rail transportation in Southern California is a permanent priority and should be funded as such by the people of California. Thanks so much for tuning in to Los Angeles again and uh, listening to me ramble on. Um, please like and subscribe.